I was talking tonight is um, about the high court. The high court. How will you stand the day of judgment? The high court. The high court. How will you stand the judgment? That is our topic tonight. People have been asking questions concerning this subject. They think that when one is born, there is no keeping of record at all the rest of their lives. Is there any records kept anywhere? Concerning what you do in this life. When you are born, are there any records? Is there any bookkeeping of an exhort? Concerning what you do and what you say and concerning everything that you do on a daily basis. This is our topic tonight. And the book of Acts of Apostles, in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, and verse 31, verse 30 and 31. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. These times of ignorance God overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. By the men whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. These times of ignorance, God overlooked. God overlooked. But now, he commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day of judgment. I want you to know that there are two days in life. Two days which are very important. There is a day of redemption and there is a day of judgment. And the Bible says so. There is a day of judgment and there is a day of redemption. The word of God has been approved and it will never lie. The truth and it is the truth and it will never, never lie. In the times of Noah, God set a day of judgment. He commanded the prophet Noah to build an ark and uh, that all those the time should come that the people should be invited to enter into the ark of salvation into the ark of safety because there would be a day of judgment and he did it and he obeyed it and then the day came when he was commanded now to announce everywhere that those who wanted to obey to enter into the ark of salvation because the day of judgment had come. People entered and the people came out. People entered and then came out. 
and in people's minds were so rebellious during the time of Noah that they entered out of fear and then they came out entering and coming out thinking that that would help at the end they all left but Noah and his family was were saved the entire family 80 people were saved that was the day of judgment and God fulfilled his word in the time of uh, the time of uh, Lot there was a day of judgment God commanded Lot to tell people to come out of the cities of the plain the cities of the plain were wicked cities Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities of the plain and God announced the day of judgment and he told the people and they, the people of the cities were to be told those who wanted to obey God to come out of the city but people became so rebellious they don't want to obey the voice of God until when the cup was full Noah and only a few members of his family were saved the day of judgment God fulfilled his word the day of judgment let me tell you God has sent me into the city of Phoenix to declare that there is a day of judgment and the day of redemption and that people whoever wants to obey the voice of God should become ready to go out to live and go out something must happen in your life and you must go out to go out means to obey the voice of God because the day of judgment is at hand. Now, the question that we wanted to ask, to answer tonight is in connection with what we say, will the words that come out of our mouths be considered in the day of judgment? The words in the book of Matthew Matthew chapter 12 Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36 and 37 But I say to you, says Jesus, but I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Even idle word, the idle words that we speak, even without minding that something is being recorded, the Bible tells us that they will be considered in the day of judgment. That every idle word that comes out of your mouth it will be brought in the day of judgment every I know it, I know it, every I know it men may speak people will give an account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you will either be justified or 
by your words you will be condemned how important it is for us to consider every word that comes out of our mouth that it should be meaningful and that's why I have been pleading with all of you that when you go out there instead of speaking chaff instead of speaking things which are irrelevant speak the word of God There is something that we call gossiping. Gossiping the good news. Many people are busy gossiping. But gossiping wrong things. There is some kind of a gossip which is a holy gossip. Holy gossip is gossiping the good news. And during the time I am right here in the city, this is your opportunity to practice gossiping the good news. Instead of talking things which are not important, things which are irrelevant, things which are not acceptable in heaven, why not try to gossip with Jesus? The people that you meet, Tell them of what is happening in the city. Tell them of the good news that is being preached in the city. Tell them of the, of the evangelist who has come into the city. Tell them how you have been receiving blessings on a daily basis. Even as you talk in the phones here and there, talking with your friends, talk about the good news. The good news you are receiving. The powerful information that you are receiving on a daily basis. You have so much to talk that will make Jesus smile than just to talk of petty, petty things which in the final day of judgment you, they will be taken into account. Gossiping the good news. Talking to people about the church. Talking to people about your pastors. The good things they are preaching on a weekly basis. That's why I've been sharing with you that you, even when you come to the meetings every night, when you come to Sabbath, I mean Sabbath morning, you come to the meetings, when you come to listen to the preaching, come with your notebook. There are people that, you, that come to church even after the church service is over. Someone will ask you at home, tell me the five things that the preacher spoke today they have nothing they will just say oh, it was a good preaching it was a good preaching what was the topic no it was a good preaching very good preaching the preacher was good the pa our pastor preached but tell us five things that you got out of that preaching they don't have anything to share. Gossiping the good news. Things that will make Jesus be happy. That here I have a person who has something to share about me. The Bible says that every idle word that comes out of your mouth. They will be brought into account in the day of judgment. How will you stand the judgment? Is our topic tonight. How will you stand the judgment? The things that you read on a daily basis. You have so much to share with your friends, relatives, friends, people here and there. On a very daily basis. That will make heaven smile on your behalf. Smile for you. Every idle word that comes out of your mouth will be brought into account. By your words, you will be justified. Or by your words, you will be condemned. That is the message from the word of God. 
Now, the question is, if there is a day of judgment, when will this take place? When will this take place? When will the judgment take place? When will it commence? Revelation chapter 14. Listen to what the word of God says. Chapter 14, verse 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of judgment has come and worship him and worship him who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water i saw another angel flying in the middle midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth to every nation, every tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of judgment has come. I like the word, has come. Not you will come. But he has come. The hour of his judgment has come. It is already here. Bible students, those who seriously study the word of God, have discovered that judgment has already started. It is started in the year 1844 and we have no time to study about uh, the details of how it started but it started in the year 1844 and it continues until Jesus comes continuing from 1844 it continues until Jesus shall come. It has started for those who have died. Those who died from the very beginning until this time. And soon and very soon after the judgment has already finished with those who have died it will begin for those who are alive to begin for those who are alive the question is when your name shall be called how will you stand when your name shall be called now the bible tells us that the hour of his judgment has come it has come. It has started and it continues. The scary question is when your name shall be called, how will you be able to start? How will you start? How will you start? It has already started and it continues. And it continues. 
Ya wa ujaji mitezika. Everyone will stand alone. When the judgment is taking place, every person will stand alone. I want you to know that we are not saved in group, in groups. We are not saved in groups. Your father will stand alone in the day of judgment. Your mother will stand alone in the day of judgment. Your wife will stand alone in the day of judgment. Your husband will stand alone, alone in the day of judgment. Your pastor will stand alone in the day of judgment. Your brothers and sisters will stand alone in the day of judgment. Everyone will stand alone in the day of judgment. We are not saved in groups. That's why when you make a decision for Jesus, you have to make your own decision. Your own personal decision. Because everyone will stand alone in that day of judgment. It is a very serious matter. That every single day you are to make your own choices and decisions. And they are not to be affected by any person around you. Because in that day of judgment, you will stand alone in the day of judgment. Even the bishops will stand alone in the day of judgment. That's why you are not to ask anyone, should I make my decision for Jesus or not? Should I? No, that question is you yourself because in that day you will stand alone in the day of judgment but now the question is where is it taking place where is it taking place where is the judgment taking place? Where? Where is it, take, it, is, is it taking place? Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9 and 10 The Bible says, I watched till thrones were put in place. And the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as the snow. And the hair of his head was like a pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. His wheels a burning fire. And a fiery stream issued. And it came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. This judgment is taking place in heaven. Heaven is the headquarters of this high court. Heaven. And God is the Father Himself, the Judge. God is the Father Himself. And the witnesses are millions and billions of angels. Billions and billions of angels. 
They are the witnesses. God the Father, the judge. The witnesses, billions and billions of angels. And Jesus, our advocate. Jesus is our advocate in this glorious court. He is our advocate. God the Father, judge the judge. The angels, the witnesses. And Jesus, our friend at court. Our friend. When your name shall be called. If you have surrendered your life to Jesus. Jesus will arise for you. Standing. Your name is be called. And you have surrendered your life to Jesus. Jesus will stand up for you. You don't need to answer anything. Jesus will stand up for you. Jesus will just show his hands. No matter what a great sinner you were when you were here on earth. When you were here on earth. No matter what a great sinner. How much, how, how a great sinner you have been. When your name shall be called. Because now that you have surrendered your life to Jesus completely and made an intelligent choice to save him, to live for him the rest of your life, when your name shall be called, Jesus will arise on your behalf. He is the one who will answer by showing his hands and saying, my blood, my blood, my blood. But if you rejected salvation and you were careless with your salvation carelessness oh yes they talk of carelessness because you are not ignorant the word of god says you are no longer ignorant of the things that are required for you to be saved into the kingdom if you were i mean if you were careless regarding your own salvation and you did not care. You were careless. You were not careful and careful about the preparation. Daily preparation. Daily surrendering. When your name will be called. Mentioning your name. Calling your name. Jesus will bow down his head with the tears in his eyes. Tears in his eyes. Jesus will weep when your name is called. Even saying words, how can I give you up? How can I let you go? How can I forsake you? Jesus will cry. Everyone will stand alone in the day of judgment. Now the Bible says that uh, everyone who has been born under this world an angel has been assigned you everyone born you have an angel you don't see who has been assigned to your life to take record and it will protect you angel an angel of God has been assigned to everyone who has been born under the sun. An angel. Therefore, the angel has a book. The Bible tells us that the books were opened. When you wake up very early in the morning, early in the morning when you wake up, from the time you wake up in the morning, until you go back to bed 
the records of everything that you ever do have been recorded. Even this very day, from early morning, very early morning when you woke up, the records have been kept of everything that you ever did. There are things that you have done which make angels to cry, to weep, for sorrow. There are things that you have done which have made angels to sing and to rejoice. There are things which the angels are writing about to you which make angels to smile. But there are things that you do on a daily basis which make angels to weep for sorrow. From very early in the morning, when you wake up in the morning and Jesus, the angels find you looking for your Bible, saying, I cannot start the world, I cannot start the day without God, without spending time with my Father, without spending time with Jesus. When you wake up in the morning and you take your Bible and you go to a certain corner and you spend half an hour to one hour spending time with Jesus, studying the Word of God, Surrendering your life on a daily basis. Surrendering your life for his keeping. Because you cannot do it alone. We are kept by the power of God. So surrendering your life that oh Jesus I know I cannot do it. I cannot do it the whole of this day. There will be obstacles here and there. I want you to take care of them. There will be problems here and there. You are the one to take care. There will be decisions during the course of the day. You will have to make decisions for me. There will be things here and there which will need me to do, to work, to do something, to decide what to do. I can't you do it. Even meeting the enemies, the enemy, the devil, I cannot face the devil on my own. You face him for me. You begin the day by surrendering to be kept by the power of God. Lord, even the words that will come out of my mouth, Lord, keep my mouth shut for things which are not pleasing to you. You are surrendering to him who is able to keep you from falling. Surrendering to him who is able to keep you from sin. The very same God who kept Jesus from sin when he was here. He is able to do it again for you. So when you begin the day in that manner. The angels smile. But when you wake out of your bed and you just march out and to go to your businesses, you go to your whatever you are doing, you have not spending quality time with God. The angels are weeping because they, the angels know you are entering into a dangerous world where the devil is without a shelter. Without a shelter. That's why the Bible says the books were opened. The books were opened. The books were opened. Even the thoughts that you think even the thoughts. There are computerized cameras of heaven. Computerized cameras. Which even read your thoughts. Computerized cameras. What you are thinking. What you have been thinking throughout the day. Have been considered. And they are recorded in the books 
the judgment is being conducted in heaven and God the Father himself the chief the angels why are they witnesses they are the ones who have been sent they are the ones who have been sent and commissioned to write everything that you have ever done so that in the final day now listen to me in the final day no one will be left out of heaven who was righteous because all the records have been kept there are people when we shall ever, we shall go to heaven we shall be surprised that they are not there they are not there because they lived in this world we thought they were good people only to learn that they were not and they will not be in the kingdom and we will go and ask you one day when we are in in heaven why don't i see so and so the angels will tell you come and see come and see come and see the records of the man or the woman that you are talking about all the records have been faithfully kept the angels they are actively on business on a daily basis to keep the records oh how important it is for us to live a life to live a life quality life that is pleasing to god and that's why it is for so important for us to be on business we have a business to do daily to make our records acceptable in the sight of god to witness to bear witness for him for the people in this world who are still walking in darkness we have a mission we have a mission and surely we have a mission we have a mission in this church among all the believers in this church we have a powerful pastor we have a powerful pastor we have pastor gary you are business in you to, to meet the people he said if you come to my church if you come to my church if you come to my church i have a powerful pastor who is preaching every week and even this week is conducting seminars and if you attend you will never be the same again and you share it with the pastor gary and he said i have friends i have friends who are coming tomorrow and i know they will never be the same so pastor goes goes home knowing that there are people who are coming he comes prepared to share the good news the good news knowing there will be visitors your visitors your visitors that is what you can do you may not be able to give bible studies these are the things which make heaven rejoice these are the things which make heaven rejoice just saying just introducing it is a ministry of introduction introducing people to the savior introducing people to your pastor introducing people to people who are coming to your church to preach the word of god what a powerful thing that will make your record cleaner and cleaner on a daily basis heaven will continue to rejoice for you until jesus shall come and say to you now welcome home we have been working together in the world now come and be with me and fellowship with me through endless ages of eternity books are kept books of record but now the question comes how will the judgment be conducted how what is the criteria in this judgment how will the judgment be conducted what are they looking at when they conduct this judgment when it is conducted what is being con considered what are the things which are kept in consideration when this judgment is conducted 
in the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12. Verse 13 and 14. Now listen to this. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the conclusion. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment. Including every secret thing. Whether good or evil. What a conclusion. This could have been kept written in the book of Revelation. The last chapter of Revelation. Now it is in the book of Ecclesiastes. Let us hear a conclusion. The conclusion of the whole matter. Here is a conclusion. If you wanted to know the conclusion. Of your destiny. The conclusion of your destiny. Here it is. In the book of Ecclesiastes. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment. Including every secret thing. Whether good or evil. The commandments of God. When your name will be mentioned. They ask. Did he keep the first commandment? Did he keep the second? The third. In fact, in the chapter where all the Ten Commandments are listed, the beginning words are full of hope. God spoke all these words in a Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 to 17. And God spoke all these words and he says, I am the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. That is a powerful promise. And it is the one which will be considered in the final day of judgment. Because every commandment that God has ever given, it is given with a promise. Every commandment. Every commandment that God has ever given, it is accompanied by a promise. I am the Lord who brought you out of, of the house, I mean out of the, the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. I am a God who is able, able to bring you out of the house of bondage. To let you be free, liberated. You are not to work your own. You are not to work your salvation on your own. Jesus is on business to help you. If, in other words, Jesus is telling you, if I, am, I could bring you out of the house of bondage, I am also able to give you all the victory you need to conquer. So, when in the day of judgment, your name is God, It is, you are asked if you kept the first commandment. And they will say, yes, he admitted that he can't. But only God is able. So he kept. 
And if you are in Jesus, surely you will keep. Because you are in him. And he is able to keep you. Did he keep the second commandment? Only those who have been depending on their own to conquer sin will be failures. Did he keep the second? Did he keep the second commandment? The third commandment? The fourth commandment which he says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Did he keep that commandment? Did he keep the fifth commandment which is with a promise to obey father and mother? Did he keep the sixth commandment which says you shall not murder? This commandment, powerful commandment, you shall not murder. Which just means if you are, you are full of hatred. Hating people. Hating some people who did not do good things to you. And you hate them. You hate some people. Or there are people who just hate some people. <laughs> who hate some people? If deep down in your heart you hate somebody somewhere. Why should we hate people? When Jesus loves the world, he loves even the unlovable. How can you hate people? And you call yourself a Christian. When Jesus loves everyone and is desirous to save all. And here you are, a Christian. You consider yourself a Christian, yet you hate somebody. Did he keep the sixth commandment? Does he love even the unlovable? Did he keep the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth? The ten commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments. Even the word fear God is also a promise. Immediately you fear God, you will keep his commandments. Because he is the one who helps you to keep them. When he says fear God, it all begins with fear God. He does not say keep the commandments and then fear God. No, he begins with fear God and keep his commandments. In other words, immediately you fear God. God. You are a God-fearing person. God himself keeps his commandments in you. So it is the commandments of God which will be considered in the day of judgment. Now, let me tell you something. If you have been coming to church if you have been coming to church but you are still sinning whether publicly or secretly in the final day of judgment your name will be blotted out of the book of life but if you have been coming to Jesus we have been coming to church and you committed your life completely and surrendering to the lordship of Jesus Christ, then your sins will be blotted out of the books of record. Either your name will be blotted out or your sins will be blotted out. The choice is yours tonight. Whether you want your name to be blotted out of the book of life or your sins to be blotted out of the books of record. 
It all depends on your choice tonight. Either you are name to be blotted out or your sins to be blotted out. What is your choice tonight? In the book of um, Revelation chapter 20 And in verse 15, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Where will your name be? Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah 8. And verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. What a declaration. When the judgment shall have ended. And the law of probation shall have been closed. Then these words will be echoed throughout. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Oh, my challenge to all of us tonight is that in the final day of reckoning, in the final day of judgment, you, each one of us will say, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and behold, I am saved. I am saved, my family is saved, my wife is saved, my children are saved, my neighbors are saved. My friends I led into the truth are saved. The summer is ended. The harvest is past. And behold, I am saved. My family is saved. My friends are saved. My wife is saved. My children are saved. Oh, what a rejoicing. My neighbors are saved. All my friends that I have led to Jesus are saved. Here I am in the kingdom with the hundreds of my friends saved into the kingdom. The summer is ended. The harvest is finished. And I am saved. How many of us tonight say, Pastor, pray for me that in the final day, I will say and proclaim these words. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And I am finally saved into the kingdom. If that is your decision, just raise up your hand. God bless you. Now, let me ask all of you, to come this side for special prayers tonight. Amen. Father God, thank you. Thank you. I stand in agreement to whatever my friend Patrick has spoken. Father, we thank you for the miracles. Even this very day in Texas, you are able to change the situation forever overnight. You are still the God of miracles. You can still go there and intervene even at this very hour and change and change and change things forever and bring restoration and restoration forever but again here tonight we thank you for the technicians who have been working tirelessly in these meetings
Father, bless them and bless their families and bless them. The hour they have been spending here from the very beginning to this time, continue to abundantly bless them. Amen. Father, thank you once again for the people who are here tonight. All of them and the families they have wherever they are, they are members of their families. And all the members of this church who could not make it tonight, wherever they are, we consider them here. Amen. So bless them wherever they are. Bless whatever they are doing, their jobs, their families. Let them receive great blessings because they have been supporting us with their prayers. Amen. Once again, take us safely home. Thank you for those who are going to be baptized. Thank you for the decision that you made. Thank you for the people who are here tonight. Take them home tonight safely, rejoicing that they have been with Jesus. Whoever needs a miracle, let them go with their miracles. Whoever needs healing, let them go with the miracles of healing. Whoever needs academic achievements, let them go with the academic achievement. Let this night be a night of miracles for all of us. We, we thank you. We pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.